This is a seven segment display uh, that counts up in hexadecimal. This microcontroller right here is actually what counts up. These microcontrollers that actually control the seven segments. So we do that. One, two, three. So in my last video, I showed a proof of concept application of me showcasing a 6502 based microcontroller that's going to be used in Minecraft. And now it is the time to make the real thing. And thus, I'm going to be making this into a fabric mod. One of the hurdles I had to face was getting C++ code to work in Java. I had to do this because I use a C++ library to emulate the 6502. Also, I'm GUI, which is going to be needed to create the IDE for this mod, uh, uses C++. So I think might as well go through the challenge of having to pour C++ code into Java. This prompted me to work with GNI, which is the Java native interface. It is basically an API for C++ code to have functions that plugs in into the GVM. Either that by using DLL files, .sl files, .dilib files, those kinds of files, the shared library files. And so I was looking on the internet on how the workflow with Gen I is going to work out. So I found this AmGUI Java library that is found here on GitHub. And yeah, this implements uh, AmGUI into Java using the Gen I interface. But the thing is, it doesn't have any C++ files. Like, how are you supposed to compile the native binding of this library if you don't have the C++ files to begin with? So what I learned is that they use a custom Gradle script to generate native source files with the help of libgdx's uh, JNI, JNI, JNI gen library. Whoa, that was a tongue twister. And I learned something new because before this, I did not know that you can create custom utilities for Gradle. So I took advantage of this new found source of knowledge and went ahead and made a script to compile the C++ files with CMake. Uh, CMake is very popular for C++ projects, so that's why I like to use it. I use it a lot of my own projects. Lots of other people does as well. And I think it's a good choice to use the CMake build system to compile your C++ natives. And yeah, I was able to overcome that hurdle. I was I was able to make this microcontroller to run for the first time. So yeah, this is actually running a 6502 processor. It's running this rotating signal program, which is showcased in my previous video. And as we can see, it powers on this node block, powers on this piston in an interval, because of course it follows like a sine wave to output the signal. And yeah, that is so cool. Uh, yeah, it just worked pretty well. And so naturally the next step is to port the AmiGUI interface into Minecraft. Originally I was thinking of just writing everything in C++ and then port it over to Java. Have a few functions to interface with it. But I thought about it and it's not going to be a good developer experience if you have to quickly change something about the UI. You have to recompile the natives. You have to reload uh, Minecraft to re be able to reload those changed native files. And therefore, I might as well just go with an official Java binding of AmGUI. And yeah, that's that's what I mentioned before. Uh, this is actually recommended through a comment, by the way. Uh, thank you very much for recommending me that. Importing this library was pretty easy. And pretty soon, I was able to quickly create a basic window with text in it. And bro, this looks so out of place. Like, I only see AmGUI in... OpenGL applications or random debugging applications, but not in Minecraft. This looks out of play. That's why I think it's funny. So this is the thing. It was so easy to import, but there's got to be some caveats that I have to probably have to face in the future of the development of this project. So this mod is supposed to work on basically all platforms. We all know that C++ code is platform dependent. If this mod is going to work on most platforms, you do have to compile all the native files into each platform that's going to be supported on. But also, once you have all those different types of native files ready to go, well, it's going to be a bunch. There are three operating systems, are two CPU architectures, and there are 32 bits and 30, 64 bits. All those combinations, they end up with 12 different types of binaries for different platforms. And if I include all of that in a single jar file, that's going to result in a large file size. And in the end, a mod user would just end up using just one of them. So it's going to be a waste of including all of them. Maybe if the first time user of this mod, once they install this mod for the first time, you download the native files from the internet, download it into the Minecraft directory, and just load it from there. That could be an idea, but who knows? Lastly, the AmGUI library may cause conflicts with other mods. 
This is because when a mod uses AmGUI, it has the AmGUI package inside the jar file. So if there's two mods that has the same AmGUI package and the mod loader, which is Fabric in this case, tries to load both of them, it will cause a conflict because there's going to be two packages that are under the same name and that's going to cause a crash and that's just not going to lead to a good time. So the next obvious step is to port the UI from the application into the mod. But unfortunately, it is not as trivial as it seems. This is because Minecraft uses a server client architecture, meaning that code does not run on a single thread. So there's a server thread and there's a client thread. The server thread is the one that actually runs the microcontroller and the client is supposed to receive the status of a microcontroller and be able to upload code to it. In order to establish a communication between these two, you have to do some networking. So like we have to use some packets so that the server is able to send a sync packet to the client so it can update the status registers, it can update the memory view, the bus status and all that. Also, there's packets for the client to be able to upload the compiled code up to the microcontroller and also tell the server that, yeah, I'm still alive. Please still send me the information from this microcontroller. I did have to do like a lot of rigorous testing. So I tested out on the single player world, making sure that everything works well. I did it on the LAN server world. And I also try to run it on a dedicated server. And this is also uh, another pitfall, which is a dedicated server does not contain all the code for Minecraft. So therefore you have to be aware of what server code is actually present. So therefore the mod doesn't try to load client side version of a code on a server, which will cause a crash. Now both the servers and the clients are able to synchronize in harmony and therefore two people, more than one person is able to view the status and be able to upload code to the microcontroller at the same time, which is awesome. All right, so this is great. So the mod is almost ready for pre-release. Now it is time for me to focus on automating the build process and the distribution process of this mod. And so therefore I use GitHub Actions. And the GitHub Actions, you can define jobs in order to build the project and deploy the project automatically. I use MC Publish, which is a, an action workflow tool, and it will automatically publish that file to both Modern and on CurseForge. Since, of course, this mod has some C++ code, it will also build the C++ files into like a shared library file, and it will upload that to GitHub. And all right, so the mod is officially published. I made a community post about it. I made a Discord announcement, and everything is all in well. Or is it? So check this out on my discord. I have a few members there that have tested my mod and they had this problem. Fuck, that's not supposed to look like that, but that's so weird. It works on my machine. In this case, I had to ask for their log files and I discovered that something is null, which is super helpful. No, but I found out that the resource manager for Minecraft is not always available on upon client initialization. So by the time the mesh are supposed to be built, probably Minecraft resource manager was initialized yet. And so therefore it's causing a null exception. And so I fixed that problem and it was all good in the end. All right, so now it is time to go over what these microcontrollers are capable of and what you can do with them. So there's gonna be a brief overview of that. So one of the simplest examples you can use this for is for logical gates. This is an OR gate. We have an AND gate right here, and the code for that is pretty simple. We Moving on, we have a clock. So this uh, microcontroller is able to keep track of time using an interrupt. Every game take will receive an interrupt and be able to track the time that way, and therefore you're able to output a clock signal. So this outputs every once a second to, to the spell right here, and you can make it faster by setting an interval to a faster interval, and stuff like that. Moving on to the next example, we have the capabilities of using lookup tables. So you're able to store a lookup table in the ROM. For this example, as a sine wave, and you're able to do stuff with that. So this machine just outputs a sine signal to these lamps. If we power on this microcontroller right here, and yeah, there we go. Uh, the next example gets more interesting because we have serial communication between three microcontrollers, which is uh, the demonstration for the UR module. And if we power these on, 
There you go. So this is uh, sending a sign signal through a serial signal right here, and this one receives it and outputs the results. Same case over here. So the most interesting examples are here, these seven segment displays. This is a seven segment display that counts up in hexadecimal. So every time I flick this lever on, it will count up in hexadecimal. This microcontroller right here is actually what counts up. And we have these microcontrollers that actually control the segments using these pistons right here. So we do that. One, two, three, four. And it's pretty fast for Minecraft standards. CD, so it comes up in hexadecimal. Once it goes to F and past F, it will roll back to zero. And yeah, this is all done through serial communication. That's the same as example right here. Uh, this is a similar example to that one, but it uses the signal strength from this item frame and out outputs that value onto the seven second display as so. So you have eight levels to play with. Goes up to eight, then you rolls back to one. And we have this last example that similar to the clock, it's able to keep track of time and be able to display the counter value onto a seven segment display. And this one actually has two digits. So you're able to count up to 255 or FF in hexadecimal. So there you go, three, four, it counts up every second. And of course it's using serial communication like, like so right here in the back to so these six my controllers. And once this value reaches past F, this one rolls over to a one. And yeah, there you go. So it just keeps on counting up, up to FF, and then we'll roll back to zero, zero, just like how it's supposed to be. And yeah, that's the demonstration. You can do a lot with these microcontrollers. And that's what computer science is all about, being able to learn new things and take advantage of those things by using your imagination, your creativity to make these intricate machines here and have fun doing it too. There's going to be more devlogs, of course, so be sure to be subscribed for more updates on this mod. Other than that, that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching, and thank you guys so much for the attention this mod has been creating. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.